welcome you all to our National Poetry Month event and to introduce our poet, Vera Schwartz, who is a very old friend of China Institute. As many of you know, China Institute was founded in 1926 by two intellectuals, the American John Dewey and his student Hu Shen, who was one of the leaders of the May 4th movement of 1919 in China, with the mission to broaden the appreciation and awareness of Chinese culture among Americans. Their mission could not be more poignant today as the relationship between the US and China is ever more intertwined and the study of Mandarin is at the forefront of foreign language studies. Arguably, China has produced a significant part of the world's treasure trove of poetry. And if it were not, and, and, and if it were not for poets and scholars like Vera Schwartz, many people would not be able to enjoy or have access to Chinese history and poetry. Professor Schwartz is the director of the Freeman Center for East Asian Studies at Wesleyan University and Mansfield Freeman Professor of, East, of History and East Asian Studies. She is the author of many books, including The Chinese Enlightenment, Intellectuals and the Legacy of the May 4th Movement in Modern China, and Place and Memory in the Sinan Queen Garden. Most recently, Vera's two new works were published, Brief Rest in the Garden of Flourishing Grace, which is a collection of poems of remembrance and loss by the Manchu Prince Yi Huan and Chisel of Remembrance, which is a collection of her own poems, which draw from roots in Jewish, Chinese, and other ancient traditions. Vera has been bridging languages and cultures for decades, and is in many ways the embodiment of China Institute's mission. We are delighted to have you back with us this evening to share your passion with all of us. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be at the China Institute twice in one semester. I was here a few months ago on a very cold day. And uh, I was talking about the book about uh, Singing Queen Garden. And this is a very different event, I hope. Uh, not, uh, you still, I want to be hooked up. But uh, let me know if it's And I want to acknowledge many dear old friends in the room, but especially Rose Siegel Ibsen, the artist whose uh, work graces uh, the chisel of remembrance. Uh, we have been friends since she had an exhibit at Wesleyan. She is Romanian. She looks Chinese, but she isn't, or Korean or Japanese. But she's actually Jewish from Romania and a very accomplished world renowned uh, calligrapher from Chinese tradition. Uh, several painters are here, and I'm especially indebted to my dear friend uh, Janet Blanc, also a painter, who has kindly uh, agreed to uh, be your visit. What I want to do is begin with a few poems, puzzle. There are two books of poems come out in one week. This one was two and a half years delayed, and this one was marvelous to find it. Um, now, these poems um, are based sometimes on the life, sometimes on the poetry of the Manchu prince Yi Huan, who lived between 1840 and 1891. He first came to my attention as a literary source about the gardens of Northwest Beijing that I was working on and wrote about in the book that came out last year. And uh, over the seven years that I kept company with Yi Huan, um, the next poem I'm going to first read in Chinese, and then I'm going to read you my rendition. Uh, they are very different. Uh, the English poem will be called uh, A Lesson in the Morning. But in Chinese, uh, the poem, as many Chinese lyrical poems, are very much situated in a moment, in a time. There are these occasional jottings. You know, Yuhuan wrote thousands of poems. Actually, he was a very lousy poet, which gave me a great opportunity to play. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not good to play with the greats, although I've begun to do that as well, uh, to do renditions of uh, more uh, well-known poets. But Yuhuan was not one of the well-known poets. This a poem is called Visiting a Singing Crane Garden, or Setting Down Feelings with One Visiting Singing Crane Garden with My Ninth Brother. We have many brothers, many sisters, half sisters, imperial sister. Uh, so the Chinese part is Xie Jiu Di Zhi Ming I just want to 
with a sense of music for poetry in Chinese. So the way I played with these renditions is, um, again, I, I was working on this when I was busy doing other things. So I would work on one line, I would seven characters, you always have a code, look up all the seven characters, all of your many, many annotations, play with the transliteration, play with a little translation, and then eventually the poem moves quite far from the original, but trying to maintain the core message. And so the poem that I'm going to read to you extracts from this, uh, which I think was Yuhuan's main reason to take his younger brother to a ruined garden, which was to teach him a lesson in the morning. So that's the title of this poem. And all you need to know is that he's using his uncle's studio name. The owner of the Singing Plain Garden also had a Chinese studio name. Yang Yu Zhenshang, which I translate as lasting gladness of the truth. A lesson in mourning. Faithful to its name, lasting gladness of the truth endures. An unpretentious corner of the garden where we come seeking our lost inheritance. Here, we can almost not feel the pain of mulberry fields swallowed by the dark seas. Among pines, shadows, decay and gloom, catch light, give warning to painted tigers, and yet together we can defy these gnawing thoughts Sit with me under these winged leaves. Let us give voice to what is gone. The poems that I'm, the two poems I'm choosing now are a little different, intentionally. It's 20 years after the other. Um, this poem wasn't written in, in Beijing. It's called Dreams Follow No Party Line. Beijing, 1989. Rushing as if to a tryst, I ride my flying phoenix by to the students at Democracy Wall. Amidst the clutter of red ink news about local elections, dead heroes, living monsters, a modest message penciled in blue. Dreams follow no party line. In the heat of politics, debates, firm resolutions for what is to be done, Someone posted a plea to let minds wander, to warn against big bombs for China's ancient ills. I too come hungry for clear answers, only to be reminded. 